Hey guys, welcome back and today we're going to have a writing lesson. So please get ready with your pens, pencils and copy books and let's start. Well, writing is extremely important as you will need to do some writing during your external examination. Moreover, you will have to write your own emails and communicate with other people via letters or posts or something that you have to write. And today we're going to write a letter to a friend. It is an informal writing. So, and that is why it is a little bit easier than the formal writing. We'll start and look at the phrases. These are the phrases that you use to start and finish your letter. Let's look through them. So, the first one, how's everything going? Say hello to your family and friends. Hope to hear from you soon. Sorry, I haven't written sooner. I've been away on holiday. Take care. Please write back soon. Thanks for your letter and telling me all your news. It was great to hear from you the other day. Well, the phrases are mingled together. Some of them belong to the beginning, some of them belong to the ending of the letter. Take a look, have a minute and decide which phrases should go in the beginning and which phrases should go in the end. Okay, guys, if you are ready to check, let's see. So, here are the phrases to begin a letter. How's everything going? After this phrase, you can say, well, I'm fine. I hope that you are fine too. Thanks for your letter and telling me all the news. After this phrase, you can sometimes speak about what happened in your life or give your reaction to the news you heard or read, actually. The next one. Sorry, I haven't written sooner. I've been away on a holiday. If it was a long time before you answered the email or a letter, you have to say sorry and explain the reason. The reasons may be different. Maybe you were getting ready for your exams or you were busy helping your parents in the garden or something else. This person was on holiday and he says that I've been away on holiday. The last phrase for the beginning is it was great to hear from you the other day. Again, you react on the letter of your friend and instead of it was great, you can use it was amazing, it was awesome, it was just fabulous, I was so happy. I, I would say actually, I was so happy to hear from, from you the other day. Or it was amazing to get a letter from you if you want to be more pathetic. Okay, then come the phrases to finish the letter. And to end the letter, we can use such phrases as hope to hear from you soon. Nice phrase. Take care. And these days we add, take care and wash your hands. Then you can say, say hello to your family and friends. Say hello to your favorite teacher. Say hello to your cousins. Say hello to your grandma. Anybody you want to say hello to. Okay, and the last one, please write back soon. Of course, I want to get a letter quicker. I want to get a message back quicker and I would write it. Please write back soon. Okay, so these were the phrases to start and to end the letter with. Let's move on. Now, this is the letter. 
and uh, uh, it is written by Danny and it is written to Sabrina. Now let's take a look uh, at this letter, let's read it and let's discuss it. So would you please follow me in reading? Thanks for your letter. It was great to hear from you. You asked me to tell you about my favorite day of the week. Well, it's definitely Friday. One reason I like Fridays is because I have my favorite subjects at school, PE and chemistry. Chemistry is great because we do experiments in the science lab and our teacher, Mr. King, is so funny. In PE, we usually play basketball, which is my favorite sport. I'm good at it because I'm quite tall. Our team usually wins. We also have French on Fridays, which is actually my least favorite subject. But after that, we have ICT, which is much more interesting. At the moment, I'm creating a web page for our basketball team. After school, I hang out with my friends, and then in the evening, I play football at the sports center. On Friday nights, we sometimes go to someone's house for a party or to watch a DVD. We can relax a bit on Friday evenings because there is no school on Saturday. Tell me about your favorite day in your next letter. Hope to hear from you soon. Love, Danny. What a lovely letter, guys. Yes, I really liked reading it. There are several reasons why I enjoyed reading it. First of all, the main reason are the paragraphs. Take a look. The letter contains one, two, three, four paragraphs. Please be aware to use them in your writing. They help you to distinguish the information and it's easier to read big writings if they have paragraphs. Let's take a look at the beginning of the letter. It states, Dear Sabrina, put any other name and you have the beginning. Dear Sabrina, Dear Mary, Dear Joan, Dear Katya, whatever, whoever you are writing. Then you have to be grateful and you say thank you for your letter and you uh, mention the reason of your writing. So your friend asked you to write about your favorite day of the week and Danny said that it was Friday. The next paragraph, which is bigger than the first one, than the entrance paragraph, tells us the first reason why he prefers Fridays. So he mentions his favorite subjects. Then in the bigger paragraph, the third one, he continues giving his other reasons to love Friday. And I think that there is one universal reason for all the school children all over the world to love Fridays. Guys, and this reason is of course that there is no school on Saturdays. Believe me, the teachers feel exactly the same. We're also very happy on Fridays because we're also looking forward to weekends. Okay, and the smallest paragraph, number four, uh, is your question to your friend. It may be really short. You don't need to get a lot of information in that because you're asking a question and you want your friend to answer you. Maybe I would add something like write me back soon or I uh, say hello to your parents or I hope to hear from you one day or even I hope to see you one day and maybe instead of love I would write hugs and kisses or best regards. What is also interesting about informal writing about the letters to a friend is that you can use contractions. You don't need to write do not. You can make it don't. You don't need to write is not, isn't, aren't. These are all good contractions. Moreover, you can use gonna instead of going to or 
one a instead of one two. And sometimes when you uh, write emails to your friends or when you text to them, you can use emojis and something like that. But of course, during your external examinations, you won't be able to use all those funny stuff, unfortunately. Okay, we can go further and let's see the questions on the text. So check your understanding. How did you get the letter? Did you get everything right? So the first sentence, Danny is a high school student. That's right, he's a high school student. He said in his letter that he studies ICT and usually ICT is for the high, student, high school students and chemistry as well. Then Danny thinks Friday is the best day of the week. Definitely, he says, uh, well, he says, my favorite day of the week? Well, definitely Friday. Definitely means that he's 100% sure. So the statement is correct. Then comes, Danny likes French. Do you remember in the text, he said, we also have French on Fridays, which is actually my least favorite subject. The least favorite subject means that he doesn't like this subject at all. Well, he tolerates it, but he doesn't love it. So the statement is false. The next statement. On Friday, Danny has an ICT class before her French class. Well, hmm, let's see. So ICT, which is much more interesting um, than French class, no, French class goes before ICT, so the statement is wrong. The next one, Mr. King is the PE teacher. Mr. King, let's find in the text, Mr. King. Uh, Mr. King is a chemistry teacher, so the statement is false. He's not a PE teacher. The next sentence. Uh, Danny goes to the sports center to play basketball. And uh, let's see. Uh, it is said in the letter that she plays football and uh, not basketball. A football player. Okay, so here are the statements, true and false. I hope that you did them right. Let's continue. Take a look. Uh, here are the questions and the paragraphs. Would you please match the questions to the paragraphs? Let's see. Okay, so let's look through the questions first. The first question, why do you like summer? So you have to find the reason. The next one, what's your favorite sport? So this paragraph deals with sport. What's your favorite subject at school? Okay. And what's your least favorite subject at school? The least favorite subject means the subject that you don't like. Okay, then comes, who's your favorite teacher at school? Have you got a favorite teacher? And what do you usually do at the weekend? Now, take a minute and look through the paragraphs. Then we'll match them all together. Okay, guys, are you ready? Let's see. So the first question, which paragraph is the best option for it? Why do you like summer? And the correct answer is B, 
Let's read the paragraph. I love it because I usually go to the beach and there is no school. I love swimming in the sea and playing beach volleyball. It's definitely the best season. Now, would you please answer this same question? Why do you like summer? Mm, I would say, I love it because I usually go to the mountains and I go hiking there. And of course, there is no school and I have a long vacation. Uh, it's definitely one of the best seasons. Okay, let's move on. Let's read the second question and match it with the paragraph. So, the second question is, what's your favorite sport? And, uh, guys, it matches paragraph E. Let's read the paragraph. I love them all, but I play tennis twice a week at school and also after school on Fridays. I am getting quite good at it. Now, guys, pretend that you are answering this question. So, what's your favorite sport? If I were to answer, I would say, I can't say that I like all sports. I like competitive sports and I like ball sports. Maybe basketball is my favorite, but I don't play it usually. Okay, think of your answers. Then comes question number three. What's your favorite subject at school? And it matches paragraph F. Let's read paragraph F. Definitely art. I'm good at drawing and painting. I spend all my free time drawing pictures and one day I'd like to be a designer. Okay, if I were asked such a question long, long time ago, when I was a school girl, I would definitely answer like this. So the question, what's your favorite subject at school? I would say, Definitely English. I'm good at English and I spend all my free time watching English movies and having lessons with my private teacher. I hope that one day I'll become a great teacher of English. That would be my answer. What are your answers? I'm sure that among you there are people who love different subjects. Maybe literature, maybe math, maybe chemistry, maybe ICT, and why not sports and PE? Question number four. What's your least favorite subject at school? And it matches paragraph D. Let's see. Let's read paragraph D. Probably drama. I just don't feel comfortable acting or performing in front of other people but I like watching my friends perform on stage. Um, if I were asked such a question, I think that I would say chemistry. I didn't like chemistry while I was at school, but actually I really regret that I didn't study it well, because it seems to be like a very interesting subject now when I see how my kids are learning it. Okay, let's move on. So the next question is, who's your favorite teacher at school? And it matches paragraph C. So we've got here, that's difficult. I like Mr. Kelly. He teaches art. He's kind, creative, and always shows us new artists and ways to make art. He's really cool. Guys, I hope that you have your favorite teachers. Your favorite teachers can become your mentors and they can become your friends. Uh, the teacher may not know everything. We're not walking encyclopedias, but we may show you the way where you can go and we can show you how you can develop your abilities and creativity. I am very thankful for my teacher of literature I had at school. And she was the one to show me how bright and how diverse literature can be. Okay, let's move on. The last question. 
What do you usually do at the weekend? And of course, it matches paragraph A. And it says, not much. I like to spend time with my family and we have a big lunch together on Sunday. I sometimes go shopping with my friends on Saturday or visit my grandparents. Actually, this Sunday looks pretty much I have in my family. We also have a big lunch together, and, uh, but we would never go shopping on Sundays, but we'll go shopping on Saturdays and we'll visit my in-laws or my uh, kids' grandparents. So pretty much the same. Guys, while answering these questions, you nearly got a layout for your letter. If you answer these questions using three or four or even two sentences, that'll be enough for a good, decent letter to have during your test or um, any other situation you have in your life. Now, sometimes uh, as teachers, we see such sentences uh, in your copy books. We see that you do not use sometimes capital letters or you miss commas or something like that. Imagine you are a teacher and you need to help me and correct these sentences. Okay, take a look at it. You asked about my favorite day of the week. Well, it's definitely Thursday. I can see that there are several missing capital letters and maybe some punctuation also. So take a look and decide what should be rearranged, what should be changed. Okay, let's check it together. So it should be like this. You asked about my favorite day of the week. Well, it's definitely Thursday. Of course, you have to start your sentence with a capital letter. And uh, uh, the second sentence, again, the capital letter. And Thursday should be written with capital letters. You know that uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all days of the week, they start with capital letters in English. Okay, now the next one, please. And it says, on Thursday, we study French, English, and chemistry. Some punctuation is missing, and again, some uh, capital letters. So, take a look. And uh, let's make it right. We'll see. So, on Thursday, comma, we study French, comma, English, and chemistry. You see? It's very interesting that in English language, they divide it with comma after Thursday. On Thursday, comma. Okay, the next one. After school, we often go to David's house. Well, here I see that the apostrophe is also missing. Can you spot where it should be? Okay, guys. Just 10 seconds for you to think it over. And uh, let's see. So it says, after school, we often go to David's house. David apostrophe S. It is his house. It is the possessive case. So you need to use apostrophe S. And again, some capital letters at the beginning are missing also. Okay, the next one. At the weekend, I visit my grandparents' house. Well, think a while. How would you change it? Okay, so we, we need to do like this. At the weekend, again, comma. Do you remember? On Thursdays, comma, at the weekend, comma. Then I, it's always a capital letter. I visit my grandparents' house. And grandparents, again, the apostrophe is missing. Whose house? My grandparents. It is the plural form. That is why you just need the apostrophe. And not just apostrophe and us. 
but this apostrophe is really, really important. Don't omit it. Okay, the next one. What's your favorite day of the week? Again, the apostrophe is missing and some punctuation is missing. Think a bit. Okay, let's check. So, what's your favorite day of the week? And here comes the question mark. And again, you needed the apostrophe because what means what is. And if you use the contraction, then you need the apostrophe. Okay, the next sentence. Hope to hear from you soon. Very easy one, yeah? So, hope to hear from you soon, full stop. Hope, starting with capital letters. Okay, and let's discuss a bit. So, guys, what's your favorite day of the week and why? Uh, I would say that my favorite day of the week is Thursday. Why Thursday? Thursday is definitely better than Sunday. Because after Sunday comes Monday, but after Thursday comes Friday. And usually on Thursdays, we meet up with friends and we have a small chat or we go somewhere and treat ourselves with something really pleasant. So I would say that my favorite day of the week is Thursday. Think of your favorite days of the week. Maybe there are Mondays when you meet your friends. Or maybe there are Tuesdays when you have your favorite subjects. Or maybe there are Wednesdays when you can go and play some sport. Or Thursdays if you have the same logic as I do. Maybe there are Fridays because Fridays we have, after Fridays we have long weekends sometimes. Maybe there are Saturdays and they can be also busy days when you help at home or you do your home tasks, but still you are more relaxed than during your working days. Or maybe there are Sundays. So think of your favorite day. You'll have to write a letter answering these questions. Okay, and the next one. What's your least favorite day of the week and why? To be honest, I can't say which day of the week I don't like. I should say that I love them all. Yes, and I also love Mondays because I love my school and I really miss my gymnasium A+. Guys, I really miss you. That's why I like coming back to work on Mondays. So, but maybe you have got your least favorite days. Think about them. And here comes your home task. Your home task is the exam question. And your friend Sabrina has written you a letter and part of it says, what's your favorite day of the week? I'd love to hear all about it. And write a letter of about 150 words in reply. 150 words, that's not really a lot. If you answer all the questions we had in this lesson, in three or four sentences, then you'll get the amount of words. But those who are getting ready for your external examinations in English, please be very accurate and count all the words. Guys, I want to recall you about the paragraphs and about capital letters, about punctuation marks and the style of writing. Please express your ideas, try to be informal, and have fun with your writing. You don't need to write the truth. You can imagine whatever you like. It's your creativity and your writing. Well, I hope that you had a great lesson today and I'm waiting for your letters. Feel free to post them on Instagram or to my email. See you, stay tuned and stay safe. Bye.